In this video, I've got some great tips and tricks to share with you to help you edit your images and get even more from Photoshop. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post weekly videos designed to help you get more from your cameras and help you become better photographers. This video is kindly brought to you by Skillshare, the online learning community for creatives. So a few weeks ago, I posted a video to this channel all about toy photography. The video had a Star Wars theme and there were two images in particular that got a lot of really good positive feedback. And also a lot of people were asking how I edited those images. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you. Now the techniques and the tools that I'm gonna be showing you in this video should be available in older versions of Photoshop as well as the latest version. And of course, if you haven't got a copy of Photoshop but you wanna try this out for yourself, then you can download a free trial. You'll find details in the description below this video. So the first image we're gonna take a look at was actually a shot of these two toy models. And if you missed that video, I'll put a link up here so you can check it out. Now, holding these models in place was a chopstick, a pencil, and some blue tack. And those are the items that I want to remove. And I'm gonna show you now how I did it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do here is um, actually remove some of the bottom of the image because if you look carefully, you'll see the letters B, E, N, Q. So this is my uh, monitor that I was using as a background uh, to crop this out. I'm just gonna press C on the keyboard to bring up the crop tool. If you look at the top of the screen, you'll see this drop down menu where you'd have um, a choice of different ratios. So for example, if I wanted to square crop, I can do that, no problem at all. I don't, so I'm gonna go back to original. Um, all I need to do is grab the corner, pull it in and resize and move my subject around to suit. And that should do, press return on my keyboard and the crop is done nice and easy. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you three tools, so three individual ways in Photoshop that you can remove unwanted items. Each of the tools are different. They're not all perfect um, and how they work depends very much on the subject. Gonna start with probably the easiest one to use which is the Spot Healing Tool. So I'm gonna click over here on Spot Healing Brush Tool and if I just enlarge the screen on a Mac, it's Command Plus just to enlarge. Um, let's start with a star. So I'm gonna choose a star, any one doesn't really matter. Just resize the, uh, the brush and if I click on it, it's gone. Move over to another one, click on it, it's gone. And once again. So it works really well on small individual items like this, as you can see. I'm just gonna control Z to bring those stars back. And if we move now over to the, to the chopstick and make the tool just a little bit bigger, we can now just brush over the chopstick and the tool should do its thing and remove it. There you go, and it does a pretty good job. There's a couple of small areas that need fixing. We'll just, uh, just fix those. And of course, up here where the, uh, the ship is, uh, Star Wars fans, you'll know this is the Millennium Falcon. I'm just gonna go along the edge here. Might, it might take a couple of goes just to get it looking acceptable. I think that looks, that looks for now, that looks just fine. Okay, so it's a pretty easy tool to use. It has uh, left a bit of a gap here where the stars were. Um, I'm gonna show you later on how you can add those back if you wish to. If we um, go over to the pencil here and make the tool just a little bit bigger and brush over with the, with the uh, spot healing tool, it should do a pretty good job of removing the, the pencil. There you go, again, just gonna enlarge just to clean up the area here where the ship was attached to the uh, pencil. I'm just gonna go along a couple of times. And that's it, so that's how easy it is to use the spot healing tool, very effective. So now what I'm gonna do is just reset the screen. I'm now gonna show you what is called the patch tool. So over to the left again, choose the patch tool. And um, for this one, basically what you do is you create a patch or an area. So I'm gonna select an area by just using my, uh, my mouse. I'm gonna, I'm not doing a great job here, but I'm just kind of rushing it. So I've created a patch. Now, um, what I can do here is now drag this over to an area and it will clone that area for me. So if I was to choose this area, for example, it would clone part of the uh, TIE fighter wing and place it where the uh, selection is. So I'm gonna go over here, which wouldn't be ideal. So I'm gonna go over here to where the um, area is just space, let go and it's done. And it's done a pretty good job. 
again with all these tools you do have to sometimes clean up this star here looks a bit messy so I'm just gonna go over and move that this one here looks a bit messy I'm gonna go and clone this one in, in its place and uh, if we uh, go up to the Millennium Falcon here So the patch tool struggles a little bit when you've got maybe a bright area meeting a dark area. It's not very good at working on edges. Uh, so it's a good tool. It's pretty easy to use, but it's not doing such a fantastic job here, unfortunately. Of course, we could clean this up easily by just going to the spot healing brush, which is the tool I, I showed you first, and just cleaning it up like so. That does a pretty, pretty good job. Okay, so I'm just going to reset the screen once again. And the last one I want to show you is the is the tool which probably will work the best for this particular image. And this is called the clone stamp tool. So over to the left, choosing clone stamp. And uh, what this does is it allows us to basically clone an area, which is going to be the stars over to the right here and uh, patch it or move it over to here to hide our our chopstick. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to move over to the right here of the screen, hold down the option or alt key on my keyboard, click with the mouse to make my selection. And then I just go over the top of the chopstick. I need to make another selection just to get rid of this bit at the bottom. And you can see the um, cross symbol up and moving up and down the screen just to the right. And that is where my selection is. So it's cloning from that particular area. This tool is really good for going in close to edges. There you go. Uh, incidentally, for this tool, you need to make sure that your mode is set to normal and your opacity is set to 100. Let's uh, go over to the pencil here, just make the um, brush a little bit bigger. Ah, so, so what's happening here is it's actually cloning part of the wing. So I'm just gonna Command Z to undo that on my computer. Zoom in a touch and choose another area over here, at option and down on the mouse to select. Now I've just got a brush over and this one works really well. Just zooming in, making my brush a little bit smaller. And there you go. And that's how easy it is to edit this image using the three tools. So again, they're all good tools in their own uh, in their own way. They all work differently. Um, just choose the one that suits. But for this particular image, the clone stamp tool has done a fantastic job. Now I mentioned earlier that if there's an area where you want to add stars, then this tool again is very good. The clone stamp tool means you can just hover over a star, press option and down with the mouse, and then you can clone that star wherever you want. easy. Now moving on to image number two, which is behind me. And as you can see, again, it's Star Wars themed. Here is an image of three stormtroopers. But when I took this picture, I only had the one figurine to work with. So what I'm going to show you is how you can layer images to make it look like you've got more than one subject. It's actually pretty easy to do. Now, when I first launched my channel here on YouTube, I actually did this shot, which is kind of a fun shot, um, using exactly the same technique. Now, before we get into this, I just want to mention Skillshare who have kindly sponsored this video. Now there's never been a better time to learn new skills so if you're a creative like myself then check out Skillshare an online learning community for creatives. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video and much more for just $10 a month with an annual subscription. But as a subscriber to this channel, you can try it for free. This week, I've been watching a video on Skillshare about cinematic filmmaking with just an iPhone by Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray. Now, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description below this video will get a two-month free trial of premium membership. So why not explore your creativity and learn something new with Skillshare? 
So for the next image, how to make one stormtrooper look like three stormtroopers. Now the process here is actually quite simple. You're taking three individual images and then you're layering them in Photoshop. Now what's really important here is that when you take the initial images, the camera does not move. So using a tripod is absolutely essential. I've done a video that covers all of this. I'll put a link in the description below this video so you can check it out. Okay, let me show you how the edit works. Okay, so we're now in Photoshop and here are our three images. The image top left is the image that I took first, which is the Stormtrooper that's at the uh, front. And he's the sharpest of the lot in terms of focusing. Over to the right was the second image. This Stormtrooper is actually standing to the right, but a bit further away from the camera than the first one. So he's slightly out of focus. And this is image number three at the bottom. And clearly this Stormtrooper is the blurriest of the lot. And that's because he's further in the background. Now these two Stormtroopers being slightly out of focus gives the image a sense of realism and depth. So what we're going to do here is stack the images together. Now the bottom image is the final image so that's going to be at the bottom of the stack. I'm now going to drag the uh, second image on top so I'll simply drag it over. Now Photoshop generally snaps it into place but if you see these guidelines appearing you'll know you've got it spot on. And now I'm going to drag the first image which is the top image also onto the stack. So this will be at the top of the stack. Once again, look out for the lines to appear. That's done. And now if you move over to the right, so this is the layers panel and here we can view our layers individually if we want to by just clicking on and off the uh, eye icons. I'm actually gonna uh, rename these. Layer one is actually the top layer. So I'm just gonna double click and I'm gonna call this top. I'm now gonna go to the middle, middle layer, which is here layer one, but I wanna double click on it and I'm gonna call it middle. And background is fine, I'm fine with that name. Um, so at the moment, if we look at the image, um, let's just shrink the other two down to get them out of the way. So here we're looking at a stack, but we're only able to see the image that is on top. If we go over to the layers and click on the eye icon, we can then see the image below, which is the middle layer. And if we turn the eye icon off there, we actually get to see the background layer. Now, what I want to do here is select the middle layer and select the eye icon so we can see it. Now, because we can't see the, um, the background layer, what we're going to do is reveal it. Now, there are different ways you can do this, and some people like to use what is called masking, but I want to show you what is sometimes a simpler way, which is simply to use the eraser tool. So I'm going to select the eraser tool, and this means now that I can erase part of this image. Now, because there is an image below it, if I start to erase parts of this image, it will reveal what is in the uh, layer below. Pretty cool and very easy to do. Now, I'm just going to enlarge Command Plus on the Mac just to make it a little bit easier. I'm also going to resize the, uh, the brush slightly because these two stormtroopers are quite close to each other and I don't want it. See, if I make a mistake, I'll just show you. If I go too far, I'm going to start to erase the... Uh, the middle layer, which I don't want to do. So Command Z, I just want to be careful here. That looks pretty neat. Okay, so I don't want this demo to be too long. So just trying to be as quick and efficient as I can. So that looks pretty good. So that was pretty cool. Now we, we are effectively looking at the middle layer, but because we made a hole in it, we're able to see what's in the background. So if we go back to our layers panel, and this time uh, highlight the top layer and again turn the eye icon up on. Now once again we are now seeing the top layer but the other layers are hidden. But the same rule applies. If I start to erase I can reveal what is below. Now all I'm going to do here is make the, uh, the brush a bit bigger. So I'm going to erase this Stormtrooper to the right, the one in the middle and same again here, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that I can get my uh, careful because these guys do overlap slightly. Okay, I think I've done a pretty good job there. And that's it. So again, effectively what we're seeing here is layer one. And if we look at the layers panel, this confirms it. Okay, this is the top layer. But because we've made holes in the top layer, we're able to see through to the next two layers. So if I turn these off, you can see the effect. 
Okay, so that's a real easy way to create this illusion that there are more than one subject. Um, all it is is creating uh, the images, then layering them, and then simply using the eraser tool. Really simple, really easy and very quick. Now I don't feature many videos on this channel about editing images, but if you'd like to see more, just let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel, and once again a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.